Hello and welcome to another episode of Tiger Talk, the official podcast of Workshop Town Football Club. It might sound a little bit different depending on whether the music is too loud, we'll see whether my editing skills are any good, um, but for me and Luke it's definitely a difference because I'm not just staring onto, uh, onto Rhodesia, I'm staring at Luke, I'm staring at the front of the ground because we are upstairs in the clubhouse. Luke, different setting. Yeah, it is. Uh, I think it'll be a bit more comfortable this one because we're in the same room as each other, which is the first time since we've started. Uh, being at Sand Lane as well and looking out to the pitch, it's looking as good as ever. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. Obviously in here, there's a bit of an echo, so we apologise if you can hear that. But uh, unlike last time when we were sat in the, the little press box that we've got and the players were behind, and I think the first feedback that we got from Glenn was that he wasn't really listening to us, he was trying to listen to the players swearing, which <laughs> is just typical Glenn. Uh, but anyway, here's what's on today's show. We're going to unfortunately talk about what happened last weekend against Dunstan uh, before moving on to the uh, Tuesday night game against Rossington where we got into a cup final, which were you know, very nice and We'll go into more detail on that later. Uh, we'll also preview Stocksbridge Park Steels uh, and Sheffield FC, the James Baxendale derby. Uh, oh, got a new signing as well we can talk about as well uh, in Lewis Butroyd. Um, so yeah, let's get into it. So let's start in the northeast. Uh, Dunstan four nil works up. Obviously, not a great scoreline to, um, to to be able to say or to digest on the way home, Luke. But let's start with them. You know, m- m- more of a positive opening ten minutes. Obviously, there was the the miss from Tomo. Well, I should say the save from the goalkeeper. But without focusing too much on what happened after that, it was a bright opening ten minutes. Yeah, it was. I thought we started off well. Um, uh, we, we ran ran every ball down. Uh, uh, certainly at the back, Liam Hardy were running up and down the, uh, the the front line and chasing balls down, and he were just him. Other players were we were getting on the ball, and yeah, it was just uh, just disappointment. We didn't capitalise and get an early goal, to, you know, to settle ourselves into the game, you know. So, um, I think the only thing we can say is what went wrong from that point. Yeah, I, I just think Dunstan kind of gra- dominated the possession they, they look dangerous going forward um, like you said uh, uh, this week about the defence uh, stretch from time to time which it does happen um, but like Parry said in the interview after, well played to Dunstan, they, they've really did a number on us and they have done a number on us this season I think they've, 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 done, they've done really well against us so is the, the pro- a potential bogey team in the future Hopefully not, um, obviously we've had that one uh, trip up there in the FA Vars back in 2017, I want to say, where we did, you know, they batted us, I'm going to have to say for 80% of that match, but we got lucky with Alec Denton scoring. So maybe a bogey team, and I've written in my notes saying that, you know, simply what went wrong was just to down to Dunstan's determination. They sort of knew that we liked to, to come at teams and they sort of rode the, the wave and it was quite a couple of counter attacks put us on the back step, and I think the whole the all all four goals were sort of poor to concede. Um, I think the opening goal, um, both centre halves failed to challenge. I think Walt Owen Burns just dropped off, and um, I think Broder didn't win the header in the midfield. Um, ball came through, and their striker Fowler scored. Um, and then the second one was just a carbon copy of when we when we last went there. Uh, you know, knocking it down the left, ball into the middle easy tap in and, and from that point it just felt like it was going to be one of those days going into the second half we thought maybe if we got an early goal that I'd be into it but again the reaction was poor Yeah uh, I said at half time uh, I'm hoping we get the same reaction we did in the FA Trophy yeah we lost the game in the but we got ourselves back on level terms and we were unlucky not to take the lead at one stage I mean and I was hoping that we were going to get that back um, we just didn't they got uh, I think the third goal came uh, pretty, was it pretty early in the first, second half. And 
then then that were game over then really the the, the wind was out the sail so to speak and uh yeah, I just thought it was just a bad day at the office. Uh, we tried to get things going, but we just couldn't. We, we couldn't get things going up front, and uh, I think it was just a, like just learn from it, like, get that because we've been playing well. So we just need to b- get back onto that winning run again, and then hopefully we can on Saturday. Yeah, that third goal was a killer. I mean, um, I don't know if we we weren't obviously sat down, but hypothetically we sunk um, into a seats at that point just because. Obviously, Moore and Deegan clashed and it just left straight to Fowler for an easy tap in. I don't think he'll have an easier uh, hat trick if he tried, especially I think he, I think the announcer anyway were bigging him up as one of his first appearances anyway. So, um, and you know, for that third pick over caught ball watching a little bit, which maybe, you know, we can't pinpoint everything on people. Uh, and the fourth goal was obviously the free kick, which I think came from Liam. Hardy tracking back and he just gave you know like a professional foul and a good free kick, mm. uh, especially from where we were stood and I'm sure they'll be challenging at the the, the goal of the month um, award for for the NPL. But you know just to go in to one of the new signings we mentioned Lewis in the intro. So I feel bad now, but uh, Daniel Moore obviously came in on a short term loan from uh, Burton with Seb unavailable for that match. Um, a tough opening fixture, but he did. You know, gave himself a little bit of credit, made some outstanding saves in that game. Yeah, it, it was a tough game for him to come into. I mean, um, yeah, it, it, it was just uh, it's one of those games where um, we, we were pinned back a lot uh, for for a lot of the game. Uh, so he had a lot of uh, a lot of con- his concentration had to be there, and he's playing against a good quality side that can score goals. So it just come up against uh, it was just an unlucky afternoon but hopefully he'll get uh, another chance and and he'll prove himself i mean i've had uh, some already some good comments about him uh, from george wilson who obviously will know anyway because he's been to a couple of games and he's uh, he lives in my uni house as well and he covers burton's under 18s and says that he's a really good goalkeeper so hopefully we'll start to see that in a couple of it will start in Saturday maybe it depends if him and Seb are going to be fighting it out uh, to move on and obviously we want to end on a more positive note um, one of the positives I got from that was Cody Cromack again we saw positives in our previous game which I'm trying to think what it was now um, where he switched Yorkshire amateur uh, him and Broadhead were swapped uh, if you remember oh, you weren't there were you <laughs> Luke um, <laughs> Cody Cromack and Jack Brodhead, obviously Cody's played more as a pivot, Jack's been more box-to-box, box. they switched roles, so Brodhead was more of a central defensive midfielder, and Cody was like an, an eight, attacking eight, advanced eight, um, and you know on the ball, we saw a different side to Cody, more you know on the front foot, sort of just skipping past a couple of players, getting it out to the wing. Again, we saw glimpses of that on Saturday, and even though Dunstan nullified, I'd, I'd say nullified us for most of that game, um, one thing that impressed me was his ability on corner delivery. Obviously, we've lost Connor Smythe to Liversidge. The way that he put in some of them corners was, was really well driven. Uh, I just wondered what your thoughts on his deliveries, and is there any positives you can take from that? Yeah, I mean, we never spoke about it, but I, I think because we were so deflated after losing 4 0, but I thought that to myself. I thought he, his deliveries was good. I think he's been one of the better players in the last uh, few games. I've I've been impressed with him. I think he's. Uh, I think, like you say, maybe that 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 switch over with Jack Broadhead is probably more a better position for him. You know, it, it takes less pressure off him defensively and makes him go forward, which he can create. He can pick passes out. He can score. He scored a few goals for us. So, I, I think uh, hopefully. Um, that will be a, a good, a good, another good combination for Parry in the in the middle of the park, which we'll need because if you can win that midfield battle, it sets you up going forward, and uh, I think he could be an important player. So let's draw a line under this and let uh, Paz take over and hear what he said afterwards. Before you know, let's pick the mood up a little bit because we're in a final. <laughs> well, I think first, you know, first off, before I go into things, I think you've got to give Dunstan a bit of credit as well. I think we've played him three times now, and they've had his number three. Three times. Um, in all honesty, I, I know you know some of the teams at the top are flying and, and got the points and 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 running away. But you know, every time we seem to play these guys, um, 
they seem to turn it on, play good football and play the right football. And and you you know you know to start with, I want to give these guys credit because, like I said, it's not just a one-off game. This is a three times I've had his number. This is here and 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 at our place as well. And uh, you know which way we've set up against them, they've 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 uh, they've done well against us and and and, and comfortably beat us. Obviously, that the first sort of ten minutes before that first goal went in. Yeah. What happened after that? Why why do you think there wasn't that reaction there? Well, I, I just think as a team and and as a management team, I've just said in there. I think it's it's one of those days for us today where no one's turned up. You know, every every every, every one of us today. We've you know, and I take on the chin. End of the day, you know, I've I've made decisions. I've set this side up today, and obviously, you know, I ain't set it up the right way. You know, so from the boys in there. You know, um, I think from after the ten, first ten minutes, once they got the once they got the first goal, it, you know, I, you know, I thought we were in the game until the first goal. But once they got the first goal, they they had the foot on they had the foot on the game, and and you know, it, it were, we won men v boys real after that. Obviously, Daniel Moore started in goal on loan from uh, Burton. Obviously, yep. not the, the best of starts, but he still made some uh, a couple of outstanding saves there. Yeah, he's, he's a young lad from Burton. I thank Burton for for allowing us at sh- short notice. We had a uh, you know, a problem yesterday with Seb, so we had to react pretty quickly uh, to get something sorted. So he's coming today, a, a tough place to come, uh, and you know he's pulled some good saves off there. You know, in, in the game, and you know he wants to be he wants to be proud of his son uh, in, in in ways he's, he's come in at such short notice and, and to doubt win. Unfortunately, I think uh, you know the ten in front of him could have I've, 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 I haven't helped him out as as much as we'd have liked and protected him really. Obviously. That losing Seb and uh, more coming in, uh, losing Connor to Liversidge, mm. uh, Alex obviously suspended now. Mm. How much do you think that those uh, variables were in this performance, so a little bit disjointed at times? I don't, I don't want to be. I don't, I don't want to be the sort of manager that just, you know, comes out and, and bleeds. You know, every time if we take a loss, bleed that it, it, we've lost because we've lost that player, we've lost because of this. That's football. That's non-league football. And we've got to have a big enough squad, and I've got to. Try, Put in place a big enough squad, a good squad to cope with these things. So I'm not, I'm not, I'm not going to say that any of them caused any problems today. The simple reason we lost today is pretty, it probably started this morning, really, in 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 certain things, in in his attitudes and preparing right. And you know, we haven't got it right today. We haven't done the right things. We haven't done the right basics in that he's trying to work harder than the opposition. Um, you know, trying to play in the right areas at the right times. And and obviously when you know you go down, which we've done the last six games, you know, in, in, in the unbeaten run that we've been on, if we've ever t- gone behind, the guys have stuck together and regrouped and reset themselves and gone and then took the game to the opposition. We had done that today, so that that's the reason we've lost the game for no other, no other reason for for anyone missing or whatever that side of things. That's 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 non-league football, and we've just got to be better prepared at that. Tuesday night, and if you didn't wait ages for you know parking and then getting in the ground like Luke did, yeah. uh, it was Rossington Main one, Works Up Town two, and you know in the semi final we're through, but we said we we're going to be positive, Luke. Let's talk a little bit about that first half because things didn't go all to plan, did they? No, um, we we were getting the ball forward, but it we're just going out for throw-ins or goal kicks or. Going to one of their players, it was just it, we we broke through a couple of times and we had some chances. Liam Mardy had a uh, a shot from the left hand side that dragged uh, dragged across goal, which we would have been disappointed because I imagine Liam has high expectations of himself and rightly so because he's a great finisher. And uh, I just think it weren't and it's another pitch that's it's not easy. It wasn't easy to play on, but. Uh, Hats Ants off to Rosington for that first, certainly the first half. They were running through brick walls. They were uh, every tackle were really hard and crisp, and we were in a game, you know. And it, I think it kind of stunned us a bit that first half. I know Paz said that it wasn't due to a little bit of a hangover, but I do think there was a bit of an overlap between the performance. Trying to obviously when games come thick and fast, sometimes you don't have time to sort of sit back, reflect. You've got to go again, and it's quite intense. And I think that first forty-five minutes was just a little bit of a, a dark cloud over us. And once we managed to you know blow blow the clouds away, um, we we came out better in the second half. But starting slow, a little bit sluggish on the ball. But I think that was uh, purely down to Rossington's setup, as Pazel mentioned when we play it in a, a little couple of minutes' time. Um, but they obviously packed the midfield more, 
we struggled to deal with that. Um, and when we were getting through, they obviously counteract that by stuffing the defence and making it compact. And it worked ultimately. And we can't, you know, now we can sit back and reflect on why we did break through eventually. But, you know, they took the lead, deserved opener. I could say a bit fortunate with the way it fell to the the, the defender, but he took it well. Um, there was a change in formation. Obviously, unfortunately, Lewis Gibbons went off injured. Uh, we started in a, well, I think, anyway, because me and Phil were and yourself were trying to debate what we were doing and decipher what we'd set up with. I think it was a 3-5-2. Then when Broadhead, uh, when Gibbons went off and Vaughan Renford came on, I think we went sort of 4-3 midfield with Aaron as a sole right winger, <laughs> which I'm not sure where you'd pin that, so maybe 4-3-1-2. Um, but then second half, we, you know, he dropped Broadhead back into central defence and that back three was restored. And I think, you know, with Ross and Tanay, they like to play at the back. It really, it, it limited them. It, it sort of smothered and it's, we smothered the areas that they were able to play in and they broke through a couple of times, albeit every team does. Do you think that's what happened, Luke? Yeah, I, I think, um, like, like what Pai said after the game, we... Um, it was just a little bit of quality that got us over that line. We, it wasn't a sterling performance. I mean, I've seen us play miles better than that. Um, I know we're capable of miles better than that. And uh, I just think, um, I, I, th- I thought we, as soon as we got that early goal, we got that spring in the step, then all of a sudden it went from being flat to everyone's up, crowds up. There were a lot of Works Hot fans that came over and cheered us on. And, and it was great to see the turnout from the Works Hot fans. Um, I thought they were brilliant. Uh, but yeah, I, I just thought we, we controlled the second half a lot more. We looked a lot more of a threat. And, uh, but then again, they did. They caused on a, a counter a couple of times. Like Gibbons up front, he, were, he, he was a nightmare a lot for, for the defenders. I mean, you speak to any defenders from Worksop who played that night, they would say the same about how much... A, I mean, he was stretching defence as well, got put running out wide and creating space in the, for the centre and that. And anyway, it was a good game. I think uh, Matt Sellers brought up... The, this just reminded me, it's popped in my head now, but uh, Matt Sellers brought up the difficult... Because I think they were in the first half where Gibbons were on Gibbons and it was uh, Lewis versus Myron. Uh, one Gibbons had an EN, the other one ON. Uh, and Matt said, this is going to get confusing. Uh, and I think Glenn replied with something like, there's just an E and an O. And even old, old MacDonald had that sorted in, his, <laughs> in the song. Um, just... just to hone in on some of that, uh, the the play was just positive, I think, in the second half, and I think maybe a rocket up the backside, as Paz uh, would would say, maybe sparked him into into getting the reaction that was needed, and I think that reaction was delayed from Saturday's game. Uh, maybe we just took a bit of frustrating uh, frustrations out. I don't think we necessarily caused the keeper too many problems. Uh, obviously, Kieran, and the old uh, keeper from last year, the second choice. Um, Pulled off some brilliant saves, but I don't think we probably tested him as much as we could. But, you know, it takes one goal better than theirs to, to win it, and we got it. Yeah, yeah I think uh, I, I think it doesn't matter what league you're in. When you're in a semi-final, you can feel the tension. Certainly in the last 10, 15 minutes, it was tense, it was tight. Uh, you didn't know which way it was going to go, whether whether we were going to soak possess, pressure up and, and, and ride it out, which we did. Um, but there was always that danger of another goal coming in and then all of a sudden it could have gone to extra time or we, we would have been elated and definitely safe to go through. So it were, I, I think semi-finals are, and finals, there's a, there's a lot of pressure than a quarter-final or so, but certainly when it's tight but, and, you, and you've got that far, you, know, you, want to, you want to go all the way then, you know, and it's, it's heartbreaking when you don't. So, yeah, it was a good game. It was a pleasure to go down there and watch it and, yeah, uh, hopefully we get lucky in the final against uh, Maltby. Any standout players, Luke? Uh, Liam Hardy in the second half, I thought he, 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 he certainly in the first 20, 25 minutes, I thought he, he was a menace. Maka was running through brick walls in that second half, using his strength, holding the ball, playing, keeping it up. Um, I thought I thought Deegan made a very good last ditch tackle in the last uh, one of the last two chances that they had. Uh, but I thought, I, I thought, yeah, probably said Deegan, Macker and, and Liam was the standout performers from, from Tuesday night. I think there were a couple as well where the first halves um, weren't so great, but we've mentioned that already. I think Aaron 
took a bit to get into full swing. Obviously, he's had a couple of a weeks out with injury before getting back into the side. I think Clee Forbes, he came back in, uh, obviously changed the game that, and, uh, that day. And since he struggled to fully cement himself, but, you know, you know, when you wait and you take your chance, he certainly tried to do that in the second half. I think he put a couple of good balls in, beat his man quite a few times. And the width was something that was pleasing in the end because we managed to get him and Manny Kianga out wide and just to sort of segue that in purposely as well we'll not question the links um Manny Kianga obviously started his first game for works up at bar the Sheffield FC abandonment so I think official records would say that it was his first start and don't think he discredited himself too much I think he struggled to get into the flow of the team in the first half I think he made a couple of good runs that weren't picked up by his teammates but the second, I think he attacked the left really well, got some good deliveries into the middle. Um, and, you know, I'm going to throw this to you now, Luke, because you spoke to him. Uh, what were your thoughts on Manny? Yeah, I, I thought, exactly like you said, uh, first half, uh, it wasn't just him, it was the whole squad. It, it took him a while to get into it. Like There was a couple of good overlap runs that he made uh, that, like I say, they, they, they didn't pick him out. But uh, the second half, he got more on the ball, he looked more positive, he was taking players on, he was getting crosses in, and he were really, he, he seemed to look more comfortable in that second half. I think uh, it'll be interesting to see how he does because... Uh, I think a good run of games will be interesting between now and the season. I progress as a player. I'm sure Parry will, 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 will make him into a better player. The majority of the players that have come through have be- are now miles better players than they were when they first walked through the door. So you look at Parry and his management staff. And, uh, but, so, but going back to Manny, uh, I, I just think he's a good player. He talked well after the game. He, he spoke really well. Um, it, it was a pleasure to interview him. And uh, yeah, it was. It hopefully becomes a, a good play for the club because certainly with Conor Smart going on that left hand side, uh, there's an opportunity on that left hand side. He's a very attacking player, uh, Conor was, and so is Manny. So there's an available option there for him to uh, get into the side. Uh, I think with a couple of performances that he's had, he's, he, he's shown that he can he can play at this uh, at this level. So we'll, we'll see um, what he'll do. But it'll be a good competition with the new signing Lewis that's coming into the club. Which so that'll be hopefully a good uh, relationship between them two to fight for that for that number three shirt. Before we get into Lewis, let's hear from Manny and then talk about this final that we've got on. Well, I thought we started a bit slow. As a team, we know we could do better. It was a slow start, but I think as the game went on started getting into the game but second half I think we performed a lot better well we came out after Paz telling us a few things we came out a lot better I think we kind of imposed ourselves on the game a bit more we showed the league uh, the differences between the two teams so I think it was a good game Rosenton gave us a good game but I think we performed well and uh, the first half, was you surprised in how Rosington approached the game because it seemed like it was a really tough f- f- first 45 minutes? I'm not really surprised, you know. I've been here, well, I started here and I came here for loan. And I know that Ro- Rosington have a good team. I've been here for a few times and I know they've got a really good team, so I wasn't really surprised. I knew what they were capable of and I expected it and fair play to them, they showed it. And uh, the second half, we seemed to get more on the ball and, and we looked a bit more dangerous going forward. Uh, was you impressed with the attacking style of the play for, in the second half? Obviously, because we've got great players. Liam Hardy, Vaughan, Maka. Uh, we've got Alex in the midfield. We've got um, Aaron out wide. We've got really good players in our team. So it was just a matter of time before everyone else saw what we're capable of as a team. And uh, it's your first official start for work, so i despite the Sheffield FC game getting abandoned. Uh, how did you think you played? Well, I thought I thought I played well, to be honest. I thought I did all right. I did a few things that the gaffer asked me to do, and I'm just waiting for my next opportunity to show I can do even more. And uh, going into a final, how, how uh, excited are you going into uh, that, that final against Maltby? Really excited, to be honest, really excited. Uh, I think it's going to be my first final in a in the semi-pro team. So we've got a really good team and I think we've got a really good chance of winning it. It's just up to us to turn up on that day and show what we're capable of. And uh, Stocksbridge on Saturday, um, how, how important is that game to get back into uh, a, a winning, winning run back in the league? Yeah, I think it's really important that game on Saturday. Uh, this part Saturday was not really a good performance. 
not a good result. So this Saturday coming, I think we'll show what we're capable of again and we should probably come away with the three points. We'll try our best to. We talked about it a couple of weeks ago. We sort of t tinkered with the idea of playing Malt Bay, but we preferred to have played Parkgate. But alas, Malt Bay Main in the final hour. Our old NCL friends, Luke, what's your initial reaction? Well, talking about bogey teams earlier, this is one of his old bogey teams from the Northern Counties League. Um, yeah, I can imagine they're going to be a typical Malt Bay side, physical, aggressive, uh, make it hard for you on the ball. So we're going to have to be on his A game to put, uh, against them. I mean, looking back at the run we've had this season, we've played teams lower than us and they've come and give us a game. So Maltby will probably won't be any different. I think uh, a final's a final. Uh, it's a, a, a big ground, so it'll be a good day out for the fans and the, and the, and the whole town and the players and the backroom staff and everything. And hopefully we can go back in, uh, down in the history books of winning another Sheffield Lounge final again. Uh, 34th this will be. Uh, we've won it 12 times, the last coming in 2012. And obviously I think we've mentioned, I've mentioned this a few times anyway about it being one of my favourite works of town memories. Obviously, Maltby, in that season, we actually got promoted, which is another favourite memory. I'm sure it'll, it'll be one of yours as well. In that 18-19 season, we played them, I think, back-to-back. -back. We played them on a Tuesday night in the Cup, beat them 2-1 after extra time. Uh, and the second one, I think we just win. Just win, that's not very good. I think we just won 2-0. Yeah, I think so, anyway. Um, great research, as you can tell by this. Um, but they're always, you know... A a fierce opposition. They're always somewhere, and you look at for Maltby away, and it's it's a, it's one that you dread. You don't really like going there just because uh, you know Maltby is you know lovely little club, uh, run quite well from like Dave Watts and that, um, and pr I think Wilf Race was a was a previous owner. I don't know if he stepped down or not. Uh, I can't remember. Um, but it's it's just the 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 pitch is um, you know it's not torn up as such, but it's 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 dogged to play on. Maltby are obviously a dogged team to play against. Uh, their route to the final, they beat Hull, Green United 4-1, before beating, obviously, Wreck 3-0. Then Nostal Man as well, fair 3-2, before a same scoreline, uh, beating Parkgate 3-2, just as well. Um, and I'm sure they'll be happy to, to face us, maybe, you know, get treated to a pitch that's flat. <laughs> um, a bit of tongue-in-cheek in there. And I also saw that Jordan Turner scored for them which would be interesting to see him come back and play against us. I remember last time when he missed that penalty, when, well, I said missed. Dave Ray saved it. Uh, bit of a weird one, if you remember that. But, yeah, so Maltby in the final. We'll probably preview this later on, get a couple of players in. I think it'd be a big special. Uh, if Jamie Jackson would like to reply to my message that I asked a couple of weeks ago, that'd be great. Uh, but uh, let's hear from Parry before we move on to looking ahead. Well, I've just said to the lads there, I thought the performance was poor. We're in Thursday, we need to regroup. We need to regroup, we need to, I think, realign a couple of things and, and uh, reassess a couple of things and, and, and get back to basics, really, because, you know, fair play to Rossiton, big pat on the, on, on the back to, to them as a club and them as, as, as the management team there, Ben and, you know, Matty there, in, in where they've, 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 they've practically, you know, I think they're unlucky. I think we've we've obviously just had a little bit of quality in the final third at the right time and has got us through, but we've got a lot of improvements we need to we need to address. What do you think happened in the first half? Do you think it may be just a little bit of a hangover from Saturday's defeat? Or no, I think I, I I I think it took us a bit to get used to their system. There's no doubt in that they they sprung us a little bit of a, a surprise in, in where they where they set up, uh, and we you know we just couldn't get to grips with, with things. You know, in in the middle of the part, they obviously playing. You know, we're, we're diamond in there, but um, it, we, we just they just worked harder than us. Wanted it more. Uh, we couldn't wait for the half time to come, really, uh, to to change things, reassess things. Uh, and and if I'm honest, probably needing someone like Vaughan Renfrew to come onto the pitch and 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 and, and spark us and drag everyone else through. If I if if any, I don't really single players out really. Uh, not often I do that, but if I'm if I'm them lads in there, I'm 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 going in that bar and buying him a pint because, you know, I thought his attitude and everything changed. It changed, changed, it sparked us, changed the game and allowed us to to go and take the game to them. You mentioned about their system, but obviously we had to tinker with ours yeah. due to uh, Lewis Gibbons going off. Yeah. Um, how, in your mind, was your thinking behind that, and do you think it helped 
uh, see us through to half time before you know obviously Broadhead dropping in and us being yeah. attacking. The, the change of system were nothing to do with Lewis going off. That that's the change of system were made ten minutes prior to prior to that happening to be honest with you we just wanted to get through to half time then change the system then change the personnel to, to adapt to what their shape was and trying to give us a little bit of a spark to be honest with you so the system that we changed yeah it did help us I've got you know it, it did help us I think the players applied themselves better in the second half you know I will, you know, let's give them a little pat on the back for that side of things but you know we've come here to, to Rossington we should be getting on the ball and dictating play and, and, and manoeuvring it and we just needed to to change the system to allow us to do that and try and get a little bit of width inside to, to obviously drag their four that we're in the middle of the pitch out wide. And into a final though, it must, yep. you must be delighted, obviously Malt be beaten Southgate <coughs> tonight 3-2. Uh, so firstly, what's your reaction to facing Maltby and how good does it feel to be in the final in you know, what could be called as your first proper season due to Covid last year? Yeah, yeah. Obviously, I do class it as my first season uh, here, you know, on that side of things. Uh, and I'm delighted to get into a final and take Workshop and represent Workshop as a manager in, into a final. You know, I made it clear from, from minute one this season that this cup was a priority for us in, in, in doing that because I know it's obviously, you know, a big thing for, for the club and a big thing for the fans. And, and I'm proud, I'm really proud to be stood here doing that and, 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 and managing this football club, this fantastic football club and great fans here to, to take them into a final. And hopefully we can do them proud in the final. And, and, and bring some silver silver you know silverware back back home. Before the obviously the floodlight stitches up. Yeah, again, no, um, I know I can see it coming out. <laughs> we, we some my night we, we travelled to yeah. Stocksbridge on mm. Saturday. Yeah. Um, now we've got that defeat against Dunstan behind us, a little distraction with the cup. How much are you looking for a reaction in terms of performance on Saturday? The reaction I need is Thursday night training. That's the reaction I need. I need all us all to get in there and, and you know and, and, and have a little discussion and have a look at things, a little run through things. So I think the priority is is the next forty eight hours and then, then, then on to Stocksbridge and uh, you know, it's it's another big game for us and another big game that we want to try and get as maximum points and the difficult side. Uh, the, the the you know, on, on that side of things we found a lot of problems with them at, with with them at home. But, you know, we've got to try and set ourselves up to create them problems, create the, the, their, them guys some problems and hopefully, you know, go and try and get as many points as we can up there. I do another little segment to our podcast uh, that we just want to give a quick mention to. We've not had time to really speak to Lewis. Uh, Paz's quotes are on the website, but Lewis Butroyd comes in from Gainsborough Trinity. He came through the academy at Scunthorpe United. Uh, he made his debut for the Iron in a 2-1 win against Middlesbrough under-23s in the Pizza Cup, uh, the Papa John's Trophy, but made his full league debut uh, on the 23rd of September in 2017. Playing the full 90 minutes in a 2-0 victory over Portsmouth that same year, he was named League One Apprentice of the Year. So comes with good pedigree. He's also spent time on loan at Spennymoor Town in Hereford. Before joining Gainsborough this season, after his release, he's played 15 appearances for them this season, and he couldn't play on Tuesday due to some rule. I think you have to be signed 38 days before that fixture took place. But he's in for tomorrow, and we've, we, you know, we don't really know too much about him. But we could talk about what he needs to bring to the table. Uh, certainly got good pedigree from his CV. Uh, but we need somebody to replace Connor's, you know, quality on the ball. And um, Keith has said he's good in both boxes, which Connor probably necessarily wasn't as good defensive wise. So maybe have, adding them two elements in, we'll see a different uh, breed of player on the left. Yeah, we. Uh, I think it'd be it'd be good for him to, uh, like, you say box to box would be brilliant because it gives us that balance going forward and and at the back on that left hand side. Uh, it's not a, like where teams will be looking, thinking, "Oh, it's a bit." They're a bit weak on that left-hand side. We'll play it over there. They want to be. They don't. You know, we want, we want uh, a player that they fear to, against. And uh, looking at his CV, because obviously we've not seen much, anything of him. Uh, he, all good signs. I mean, apprentice of League One. You know, how many 
how many players would have been going up for that and the quality of, of, of players. So it shows he must have the quality and uh, he, he has played for Scunthorpe. I mean, even to go and play for Scunthorpe, it's, it's massive odds against you, you know. So he, he must be some kind of good player and uh, he's played at even a higher level in the, in the non-leagues. So he knows what non-league football is about. It's not like he's just come from an academy and just come straight into non-league here. It's, he's had a better experience coming in uh, and I think that's what we need going forward. When you mentioned Apprentice there, it just made me think of Alan Sugar. and uh, this. Have you watched any of this year's one? Bits and bobs, yeah. Have you seen the logo that I, one of them I, had? I've seen the app. Oh, the oh, it, the absolutely wind. terrible this last week, but we'll not, not get into that unless, <laughs> unless we want. If, if anyone wants an Apprentice segment in this, um, we'll leave it in. But, you know, we mentioned about Lewis being in for Saturday. Stocksbridge Park steals. Uh, very cold place to go, Stocksbridge, very high up. Um, hopefully the, the weather will you know, keep up and, and maybe <laughs> we might even reach nine degrees tomorrow. Um, they are sat in 12th. They are 13 points off the Tigers. Just uh, They've won just two of their last seven. Uh, Ian Richards is their manager, the former, um, the former Peniston Church gaffer, um, especially when we beat them here. With, it's hard to believe, you know, sitting up here, there was... 1,600 people around the perimeter of this pitch. But there was. Uh, we've had some good battles over Stocksbridge over the years. Uh, it's going to be another tough game, though. Yeah, I, I think um, Stocksbridge, yeah, they're near the bottom. Uh, like you said, they're not, they're not hitting good form at the minute. But them records are there to be broken. Um, I, I, think, I think it's a game we've got to look at. Definitely getting three points. I mean, we can't be slipping up against teams towards the bottom end of the table because it puts more pressure on us to get results with, uh, against the teams around us even more than there already is. And uh, I, I just think it'll be a tough game. Uh, Michael Trench, ex-works up player, will, will be there. So that'll be interesting, see how we go on. And uh, yeah, it'll be interesting. I think last time we were there, it was 2-2 and it was uh, an entertaining game. Hopefully we come away with three points and it's a bit more of a relaxed uh, 90 minutes. There's another player who, that were part of the double winning side. Uh, Ross Goodwin is there. I'm yeah. a huge admirer. Yeah. We, all, we all know Ross's yeah. qualities, especially as like a box to box midfielder. Yeah. He gives you the perfect, perfect amount of uh, grit and determination in there. Um, but we're not, you know, think about him too much because we don't want to give him some confidence ahead of tomorrow. <laughs> um, and you mentioned that two all draw. It was gut wrenching in the end, I think. Uh, Reese Fielding scored, which obviously Carly's brother played here, and we know Carl, who's, you know, I hope he's there tomorrow because he's a good laugh. But uh, again, stop getting, stop talking about ex-players. Right, <laughs> they will have a bit of confidence at home. Uh, it, their home form is considerably better than their away form. Uh, Ten games on on the uh, on home soil, five wins, two draws, three losses. Um, obviously, we played them here, beat them three two. It was a tough game as well. Yeah, uh, I think that was a uh, like uh, another tight game. Um... I think Stocksbridge will, will make it hard for us to play. I, I would imagine it'd be similar set up where they'll they'll be pressing on the ball, not making us play, uh, making it hard for them, for hard for us. It'll be on their their turf as well, so they'll be more used to that than we will. So it'll be interesting to see how we deal with that. I think midfield battle's probably going to be a big one, um, uh, and I'm interested to see uh, how how we set up and how we play against them. And then on Tuesday night at the Windsor Food Service Stadium, this beautiful stadium in front of us. I need to stop referencing that and make people jealous. Now, uh, the, on Tuesday night, we welcome uh, Sheffield FC. Could we call it the, the James Baxendale derby? Or is that too much going into ex-players again? This bit, the segment's been no one, hasn't it? <laughs> um, Ryan Cresswell, the former uh, Rotherham United defender. Uh, I think he played for Fleetwood as well and Southend. Um, he took over just before our meeting back in December. Um, I said meeting, it got abandoned, didn't it, due to an injury with Adam Watson. But since he took over, I think they've. It, I think he's overseen six games, won just two of them. Uh, but comes into this game full of confidence, uh, a four 0 victory over uh, Pontefract Collieries. Um, the goals were on Twitter. They were abs- I don't know, I just want to take, admire them, but they were absolutely fantastic. I think one of them were just a, a goal from like just inside halfway, a dodgy clearance from the goalkeeper. I think Baxter's goal was really good, well worked. And then the third, final goal was an absolute stunner. 
But hopefully they've used that juice up and they won't affect us like that. But we have to be wary, obviously. Um, they play Cleethorpes on Saturday, which Cleethorpes uh, are up and around us. Hopefully Sheffield will do us a favour before we can uh, match up and hopefully cause some ground on that top five again. Uh, but again, it's another difficult game because even though they're down there in 17th, they're certainly looking to get away from that bottom two. Yeah, uh, I think he, even though like they've won two and six, but compared to the, if you look at the form throughout the season, it's an improvement because I think they went two wins in twenty games or something. It was well, maybe more. I, I, I don't. I can't really put a finger on what, what it was, but I just think uh, they've they've got some new players in, so it's going to be a, probably a different setup to when we played them last time. Um, I think. Uh, with Ryan Creswell, he brings a lot of pedigree, which I would imagine it would raise their game because they'll want to play for him and impress him because he's he's been there and done it at uh, some of the highest leagues in the in this country. And uh, yeah, I think it'll be an interesting game. Um, I mean, we were two on up, so it'll be a bit of a disappointment if we don't win the game because we was in a winning position before it got abandoned. Uh, but yeah, I, I just think it'll be um, it'll be an interesting contest, and uh, I think we need that's another game we need to win because if we can win if we can win that game and win on Saturday, that's two wins, and then all of a sudden we're going back onto a winning run again, and Dunstan's forgot about. So yeah, it'll be interesting. As you mentioned, the that that game, I thought we were good value for money, especially our first twenty minutes. Obviously, going two 0 up, um, Macca and, and Liam Hardy with the goals. Uh, Liam's goal were brilliant and just slow and just you know it's like but we we want to be taking six points from these next two games whether that's achievable you don't know the opposition teams if you know Stokesbridge is still in contention for the top five just like a, an outside shout I'd probably say they'll be wanting to climb the league and, and more climb away from that bottom zone uh, and Sheffield FC will just be fighting for their lives at the minute and we seem to struggle a little bit with a with team scrapping down there but Hopefully we have a, a good game and we can reflect on it Thursday or, or when we next sit down to record uh, and probably not Friday night, <laughs> last minute job. But speaking of Friday night, the under-19s are currently well uh, warming up, uh, ready to face Gainsborough um, and the, with the power of magic and editing, you can hear from uh, Andy Parnell on how that game went. So Andy, um, obviously it finished 4-1, but felt like the uh, the scoreline was definitely uh, d- didn't reflect the performance. What were your thoughts on that? I'd agree with that. Um, unfortunately, games were a good squad. They're a good, solid squad. They've got quality all the way through. Um, they take the chances, and we didn't. Uh, first half, I think we were definitely a better team. We didn't take his chances. We hit post a couple of times. We should have should have uh, had a couple more goals. We didn't. Um, and that's the difference between top at league and where we are. Um, we brought in a new striker, uh, Ten. He's had an outstanding performance there, and uh, Ali, and he's uh, he's brought some quality up front because we had identified we needed to do that. He scored our goal. Uh, I think that says everything about that uh, th- that part of his game. Defensively, I think second half we sat far too deep, far too deep, and let these guys play onto us. And if you give a team with that quality that much space, they're going to utilise it, and they did. You mentioned about the the, for, the forward aspect. Do you think uh, over the course there's not been as many games that you, as mm. you'd like to keep that consistency, keep the legs moving? Do you think it was just down to a little bit of rustiness? Um, no, I don't think it is, to be honest. I think complete opposite. They're playing a lot of football with, with scholars um, and then obviously we've got guys going up into 21s and they're also playing under 17s in junior section. So they're doing a lot of football, we've got a lot of injuries. Cole, uh, we missed Cole in second half there. I think he could have brought something to positive from game, um, and that's just from an injury from playing from 21s and um, from our last game last week against Collingham. So just a reoccurring injury. Um, so I don't think it is rustiness. I think it is the opposite. They're playing too much football. We've got some key members of the defensive team out because of red cards and poor discipline. Uh, that's something we've improved on tonight and I, I'm, I'm proud at lads the way they were with the discipline tonight but unfortunately um, Gainsborough deserved a win tonight they came out on it fighting they knew they were up against a good squad and uh, to be honest they capitalised As you mentioned 
defensively when they dropped. Uh, it probably caused uh, Marco a couple more saves, but mm. uh, bar the goals, I think he had a respectable performance. What yes. were your thoughts on that? Marco did, yes. He, he, had a, he had a very good performance. One thing that Marco needed to improve on was his communication, and, and tonight he was outstanding. Um, it, it, it definitely builds confidence in your back row when you've got a keeper of that quality behind them. The, after that, though, we have got Callum as also, who uh, is out injured again, so we've got another player injured, uh, who also brings that same element to the game, so we're quite blessed when it comes to goalkeepers. Uh, like I said, defensively, though, we just sat too deep and we gave them room to play in front of us, and, and they, they came into that space and utilised it. Simple as that, really. You mentioned about Cole playing for the 21s, obviously a pleasing aspect in terms of pathway and, yeah, yeah. and, and the academy system overall. Um, just how pleasing was that for him to obviously score last night as well? Mm. But the, uh, you, you've already said to me about you know other players like Alfie and that being able, being called up and training with them. Just yeah. how pleased as a, as a management team are you? Oh, uh, absolutely. I mean, we'd spoke, we'd spoke uh, as a management team with Paz and um, with Laurie about it felt they did feel to be a slight disconnect and we needed to show um, that we we were um, as one club like we said we were going to be but it's very easy to get on with your business when league starts and just go about your business trying to do your job and we have got to remember that with player development has got to be key and bringing these youngsters through and proving to these youngsters that we put as money where his mouth is and, and we, we want them playing. Now, the game against 21s last week proved the quality we've got in our squad once again. We've played them twice now, we've come out on it, uh, proving that we're equal to them, in my opinion. And I think Laurie's commitment to taking eight of them to training last week and uh, selecting some of them um, for the game on Thursday night um, just proves that fact. We have got quality in this young squad. Uh, they are very young, 16 and 17 year old lads playing under 19s league and now playing under 21s. Future's bright, to be honest, for youth of football that works up time. And it weren't just you know the tw uh, some of the 19s playing for the 21s last night. Obviously, Luke got fir more first team minutes mm. uh, for the first team on Tuesday. What sort of message does that send to your squad, and how much of a you know a, a boost should that give to them to sort of set their aspirations high and get in there? Oh, absolutely. I mean. The changing rooms was in, in uh, before kickoff, uh, and the gr the group chat that we've got, we're also buzzing when when we uh, put into the group chat about the number of players that were getting selected for 21s. It did lift the spirits. Uh, the spirits are high. Right. It's just a damn shame that this little game's uh, knocked the spirits slightly. I'm absolutely. I'll guarantee you this squad will bounce back after this loss. Um, we'll bounce back next week, and and we'll we'll go again strong quality in that squad will get us wins but then to jump back in time last night the under 21s won 3-2 over league leaders and then unbeaten going into the game uh harworth cholera uh cole purcell who you know has played for the the under 19s uh, got a call up scored on his call up uh imram abdella and jack rattenbury scored the goal so a little bit of a success there but I think that's a good time to tie it up, Luke. Uh, we need to get back to actually pretending we're doing some work, don't we? Um, Luke, episode 13. Yep, uh, I think it was a good one. Uh, a lot of coverage to go through. Obviously, it started off on a sour note with a 4-0 defeat, but then the obviously getting to the final was, was much better and speaking about the future. And uh, yeah, I think it's been a good uh, podcast. Apologies if it sounds a little bit rushed. I know we. I mean, after this game, it's going to be a rush to get this out and into your ears uh, before ahead of Stocksbridge, and hopefully, we everyone has a safe trip there. Uh, if you're not, un, if you're unable to go, I know. I know one fan uh, tweeted in saying that he tested positive and unfortunately won't be able to make it. But myself and Luke and oh, I think Michael will be there, um, so there will be live coverage of the game. We'll give as much media attention as we can. Um, and just you know, follow us on our Twitter pages, Facebook page, Instagram. We're slowly creeping up to uh, two thousand nine hundred followers on there. Um, and I think there's only one thing left to say, Luke. Yeah. Um, hopefully, we um, the next podcast will be another positive. Uh, looking back on a couple of wins, uh, I think we've got a long January. So yeah, hopefully, I think it's, things are going to look good for the future. Hopefully, for works up. Up the Tigers. That's what I meant. Right. <laughs>